Hello, I'm Edward Tart, math teacher. I have a short math lesson for you, followed by a challenge with prizes available in case you want a prize. This lesson is about a graph. The graph of the equation y equals x squared, meaning x times x. And I'm, in this lesson, only concerned with the part of the graph where the x values are 0 and positive. I'm not concerned with negative values of x. 0 squared, that is 0 times 0, is 0, and so we have the point 0, 0. 1 squared is 1, that is 1 times 1 is 1, so I go over 1, up 1. 2 squared is 4, so I go over 2, up 4. 3 squared is 9, so I go over 3 and up 9. 4 squared is 16, so I'll go over 4, up 16. 5 squared is 25, so I go over 5 and up 25. And so on indefinitely. The x's continue indefinitely to the right, and so does the graph, continuing indefinitely to the right as it gets steeper and steeper. How steep is this graph? Well, it depends on where you are. Uh, near the bottom of the graph, it's not so steep. But the further you go up the graph, the steeper it gets. The steepness of the graph at any particular point is considered to be the steepness of what's called the tangent line at that point, a line that just barely grazes the graph at that point. And I want to give you a few examples of steepness numbers. This sheet illustrates steepness numbers 2, 4, 6, and 8. Here we have a graph, a line that goes over 1, up 2. That's a steepness number of 2. Here we have another one that's steeper, goes over 1, up 4. That's a steepness number of 4. Here we have one yet steeper, over 1, up 6. That's a steepness number of 6. And here we have over 1, up 8. That's a steepness number of 8. The bigger the steepest number, the steeper the line is. Well, for this graph, it's a fact of calculus that the steepness number of this graph at any particular point is simply 2 times the x value at that point. And so, where the x value is 1, right here, it is steep enough to go over 1 up 2. Where the steepness, not, where the x value is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, right there, it's steeper, it's steep enough to go over 1 up 4. Where x is 3, that's at this point, it's yet steeper, steep enough to go over 1 up 6. And where x is 4, which is that point, it's yet steeper, steep enough to go over 1 up up 8. So I've just described the four steepness numbers that I showed on this sheet. Steepness numbers of 2, 4, 6, 8. And the higher you go on this graph, the steeper it gets, the, biggest, the bigger its steepness number. And there's no limit to how big the steepness numbers get. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and so on indefinitely. Now, we're getting close to the challenge. Does this graph have vertical boundaries? I'm talking about possibly a vertical boundary to the left of it, and possibly a vertical boundary to the right of it. Well, to the left of it, it has plenty of vertical boundaries. and Any line to the left of the y-axis will do. This graph never goes to the left of that line. It has a vertical boundary to the left. Does it have a vertical boundary to the right? No, it doesn't. Any vertical line that I consider to the right out here has points 
on the graph to the right of that line. The graph crosses and passes the line no matter how far out the line is because the x's go on indefinitely to the right and that makes the graph go indefinitely to the right. And so I have two questions and their answers. For this particular graph, is there a left vertical boundary? Yes. Is there a right vertical boundary? No. Now I'm going to take this graph and rotate it counterclockwise 90 degrees. That will rotate it from this position to this position. So it's now sideways. And now I'm going to ask the same questions. Does this graph have a left vertical boundary? Does it have a right vertical boundary? Well, it certainly has a right vertical boundary. Uh, here's one. This graph does not get past this vertical line. It doesn't go to the right of it. Does it have a left vertical boundary? Uh, no, it does not. No matter how far out I move a vertical line to the left, the graph gets past it. And so the answers are the opposite here of what they were when the graph was in its original position. Now the answer is, the answers are, is there a left vertical boundary? No. Is there a right vertical boundary? Yes. The yes became a no, the no became a yes. Well, that change occurred because I rotated the graph 90 degrees counterclockwise. And so my question is, there are actually two questions, how much of that 90 degrees rotation did it take to change this yes to a no? And how much of that 90 degree rotation did it take to change this no to a yes? What I would like from you, if possible, is an answer to each question and a convincing argument for each of your answers. If you can do that, Please don't do it at the comment section of this video. Instead, go to my profile page, click on Send Message, and message me your answer. And if I am satisfied with your answer, you can have a prize if you want it. The prize I offer is an audio file of me playing my piano, a selection that I recorded some years ago. If you need help deciding whether you would like the prize, you can go to my profile page access my piano videos playlist and watch one or more of those videos. If you want the prize, be sure to include your email address. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and that if you work on the challenge, it will give you mental stimulation and pleasure. Thank you for watching this video.